Welcome to the Pod of Inquiry, pushing the envelope for human understanding and optimization, the podcast for podiatrists. The Pod of Inquiry is designed to empower you with knowledge. What happens from there is up to you. Your host, Dr. Stephen Barrett, has designed this show to take you down some very deep rabbit holes, hopefully bringing you back out again, relatively unscathed, but cerebrally whipped, enabling a better understanding of all things worthy of inquiry. If you have more questions after the show, then that is good. The new discovery today, many times, was the new discovery 50 years ago, only to be suppressed or plainly ignored. Medicine and surgery can sometimes take a long while to get their paradigm shifted. We hope to have a lot of fun on this show and maybe destroy some ridiculous dogma along the journey. Thanks for joining the show today. Let's start spelunking. Well, this week I want to present a webinar that we recorded back in October with Christian Drapeau, who is the author of Cracking the Stem Cell Code. I was so impressed with Christian Drapeau's science and product that I had to bring him back for a webinar because we had so much uh, audience inquiry about how they could learn more about this interesting concept of uh, mobilizing your own adult stem cells. I personally have taken stem regen myself now for about six months and can see a difference in my wound healing and basically recovery after uh, just things that uh, fire up the musculoskeletal system. So I think you'll find this uh, webinar an encapsulation of what we talked about at the uh, beginning of season three, which was episode one, and that aired on uh, September 4th of 2023. So if you haven't listened to that episode, I'd strongly recommend going back and, and checking it out because this is something that you're going to want to put your patients on perioperatively as well as probably yourself. Um, I know it's just made me feel better, and I've seen incredible examples now in the perioperative uh, setting where people are just healing faster than they did uh, before taking it. After listening to this webinar and maybe going back and listening to the original podcast that I had with Christian Drapeau on stem regen, you want to start this for yourself or actually start a program in the office. Uh, you can go to stemregen, one word, dot C-O. That's S-T-E-M-R-E-G-N, stemregen, dot C-O. And you can use the discount code of SBARRETT15. That will give you a 15% discount off your initial purchase. So without any further introduction, please enjoy this rebroadcast of a webinar that we did back in October. All right, I think we can uh, get started uh, with introductions. Dr. Barrett, thank you so much for um, putting this together. And um, for all the attendees, my name is Brian Greenleaf. I'm the VP of Sales for Stemregen. And Dr. Barrett, uh, go, ahead and, go ahead and take it over. Well, thank, thank you, Brian, and uh, thank you, Christian, for agreeing to come on. I was uh, overwhelmed with what I learned when we uh, hosted you uh, for uh, Season 3, Episode 1, back on September 4th, and I've been familiar with since we talked uh, back in June about STEM Regen, and I've been taking it myself, and have we'll talk about some noticeable differences that I've seen, and as well as uh, I've been uh, recommending it and prescribing it to my per, uh, patients now perioperatively and uh, starting to see some great benefits. So I know that anybody who's connected to the webinar tonight will be you know, very um, appreciative of the knowledge that they're going to gain from you. So uh, thanks, Christian, for not only you know taking the time to come back on tonight, but also for all your hard work over the last uh, couple of decades to get us to this point. And um, before you start, just want to uh, comment on uh, his book called uh, Cracking the Stem Cell Code, and uh, it's listed in the show notes for the episode on our Pot of Inquiry website. So if anybody wants to get that, I found it a really well-written book that can, you know, uh, be pertinent to the layperson as well as the the practicing physician or even the bench scientist. So thanks so much, and um, why don't you tell us uh, a little bit about the whole story, Christian, if you could. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So let me uh, turn on here my the PowerPoint. So tell me, Brian, if we don't see that well. Perfect. So my background, 
Okay, my background is uh, neurophysiology. So my training is essentially, essentially I'm a neurophysiologist from McGill University. I was working at the Montreal Neurological Institute, uh, mostly working on epilepsy and memory. I'm not a, a physician. I'm not a health practitioner, a clinician. So I'm a pure researcher. So I can share you what I know, but you'll make a much better use than I will with it. Um, and uh, so I was hired uh, in 1995 to work with a, a plant that had many kinds of health properties and I tried to understand how it was working and it's really that that led me to the whole field of stem cell research. So the topic is really endogenous stem cell mobilization and uh, to introduce this, let's just say when we talk stem cells, uh, almost to anyone in the world, but probably even more so the medical profession, we think of it as, uh, as something that comes from the outside or we can take it from ourselves and then re-inject it, re-inject them. And, but it's a one-time event, or we do it a few, a few times, but it's something that we get for one specific purpose. And in this whole question, you know, where we recognize the regenerative properties of, of stem cells, the question that is never really asked, or what we don't talk about is that these stem cells that are extremely regenerative, coming from the bone marrow, from the blood, from fat tissues, well, they are in our bodies to begin with. So to me, the big question was, what is the natural role of stem cells in the body? And is there a, a way of tapping or levering or leveraging the, uh, the regenerative power of our own stem cells in the body? So, and then to apply this to, uh, in this specific presentation, to uh, orthopedic surgery. So I'll focus a lot of my information on wound healing, bones, uh, nerve, peripheral nerve regeneration, even spinal cord uh, regeneration. But before I get into this, I think it's, it's good to just put all of this back into the bigger context of what stem cells means within this discussion. I like to start by positioning the discussion between two extremes because I don't think that this kind of information is actually talked about into, uh, um, into the world of stem cell research, but, but for you guys as clinicians. So number one, the work from Doris Taylor that really illustrates the amazing regenerative power of our own stem cells. So she took uh, the heart of a mouse and uh, flow circulated on this heart digestive proteolytic enzymes and after about 12 hours all the cardiac tissue the muscle is completely gone the only thing that we're there left with is the connective tissue sort of the sorts the soft skeleton of the heart and on that soft skeleton they laid out stem cells coming from the anim that animal so the this collagen this connective tissue still retains the trace that it was a heart and within about a week they get a beating heart in a test tube. And I'm saying this because we will never live with like a no heart or no pancreas or no hip or we, but we could have a damaged heart, damaged pancreas or damaged area. So if stem cells can repair the heart, which is an organ traditionally known to not really repair, then it's just exemplifies or illustrates the power of our own stem cells. And at the, on, the other end of that spectrum, there is the reality that we have evolved over uh, tens of thousands of years, uh, 50 thousands of years, with a life expectancy of about 30 years of age. Uh, so longevity has not been really selected in our evolution. And over the past 150 years, longevity has gained 50 years. And so it's just to understand that that our biology, our ability to repair, which is our own stem cells, has never been uh, pushed to go and be effective beyond 30 years of age. And this is why today, our body today uh, is born with red marrow that makes stem cells, but very quickly in our, in our lifespan, in our life, by age 30, uh, very quickly the red marrow converts into yellow marrow. And by age 30, we have lost almost 90% of our red marrow. And this is mirrored by a drastic decline in the number of stem cells in circulation. And these are the stem cells that are available to participate in tissue repair. So the, the, the overall picture here is to understand that stem cells in our body are the repair system of the body. Anytime there is an injury, uh, in the case of what, uh, what you guys are working with, which is uh, a controlled wound through a surgery, 
that area of the body is screaming for stem cells. It will naturally release compounds that will go to the bone marrow, trigger the release of stem cells from the bone marrow. Then the damaged area will release other compounds that will attract stem cells to that area, and the stem cells will migrate in that area and will help repair the wounds. The problem is that past 30, 40 years of age, we have such a decline in the number of stem cells available to participate to tissue repair that we do not repair as well as when we were 10, 15, 20 years old. And it's definitely, not definitely, but directly linked to the fact that we don't have enough stem cells in circulation. So there's a direct link between how many stem cells in circulation and the ability to repair. So this is what I want to talk about now. Just give you a few examples within the scientific literature of what happens if we can stimulate the release of stem cells from the bone marrow and put more stem cells in circulation. I could choose many kinds of condition. I will choose those conditions that are touching your profession. But I want to start with the heart because within the overall um, um, academic world here of cardiology or human physiology, we know that the heart is an organ that does not repair very well. There is this concept that the heart will mature until about 10 years of age and whatever we have after 10 years of age is really what we have to live with. If we, have, if we damage the heart, the heart does not really have the ability to repair and stem cell research has completely changed that perception. So here's a study in which scientists did a, uh, a ligation of the coronary artery. So they stopped the blood flow to the heart, triggered a heart attack, then let the animal recover and then separated these animals in two groups. One group is control, the other group they injected GCSF stem cell factor, which are natural compound that the body uh, uh, synthesized whenever there is an injury, and they're known to trigger stem cell release from the bone marrow. So the only difference between these two groups is that the experimental group have probably 5,000 to 10,000 percent increase in the number of stem cells in circulation. So a very significant increase in the number of circulating stem cells. So if we look at the control group, a matter of about four weeks after uh, the, the stem cell injection, we can see in the experimental, in the control group, severe scar tissue in the ventricular wall, no new blood vessels, 17% survival, and poor cardiovascular health. In the experimental group, renewal of the ventricular wall, new uh, blood vessels tapping into the other ventricles, 73% survival and almost uh, reversed cardiovascular function or normalized cardiovascular function. I will show you uh, an example in humans where we have something very similar, but in terms of the heart, it's repair of the ventricular wall. It is also uh, a removal of hypertrophy of the heart. The heart regains its normal size. It's a significant reduction in fibrosis or cardiac remodeling. So essentially all aspects of cardiac function is improved uh, with releasing a person's own stem cells. So for what is more pertaining to your profession here in wound healing, this is the typical curve in red of normal wound healing, which is uh, reaching 50% recovery after two weeks and full recovery after four weeks. But if you inject GCSF, which is to stimulate the release of the animal's own stem cells, you get about, you gain about four days, three, four days for 50% recovery, and you gain full recovery, you gain about a week. We have a very similar uh, curve that we got in a study that we did with uh, a plant-based stem cell mobilizer. I'll come back to that a little bit later. But, uh, and that was done with a soccer team, a professional soccer team in Madrid. So the team had about 12 players with soft tissue injury to the ankle. And, uh, and the, the coach called a colleague of mine for help because he had 12 players that could not start the season. So we took advantage of that situation, separated the players in two groups, pair matched them in terms of body weight and, 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 and degree of injury. Uh, and then we had one group that was the control group. They did everything that is normally done for that kind of injury. And the other group did the same thing, but we applied uh, a plant, a, a blend of herbal extract that supports stem cell release from the bone marrow. So we can see in the control group, they got about 50% recovery after three weeks uh, and then full recovery after four weeks. And in the group that just released their own stem cells, they gain about one week to reach 50% and they maintain that week over the entire process of recovery. So they were able to return to play one week earlier than the other group. And that's really kind of the 
the bulk here of the understanding. You put more stem cells in circulation, you repair faster when you have a wound, and obviously a, uh, a, a surgery is a controlled wound. Here's another study with wound. This one was done with a punch to the skin in mice. These were diabetic mice, so this was to study the healing of diabetic wounds, but the same holds true just for wound. So the top group here is saline. The other group is simply uh, a, a, a combination of compounds that trigger stem cell release. You can see the, the, the faster recovery. This is the time before recovery. So this is control. This is diabetic, um, normal diabetic mice. And this is diabetic mice simply stimulating stem cell release. So it gets close to, uh, to control. This is the scar size, much smaller by triggering stem cell release from the bone marrow. This is the complete healing time almost the same as control just by stimulating stem cell release. And this is the number of hair follicles uh, simply because when stem cells move into a tissue, instead of having the local fibroblast that kick into gear to heal the wound, which then gives you a keloid scar, it is stem cells from the main circulation that will migrate into the, into the wound site and then will become air follicles, sebaceous gland, uh, sweat glands, everything of a normal skin. So you get a much, much finer scar, and which includes here quantified by simply the number of air follicles. Uh, and in bone fracture, uh, I did not extract the graphs from these articles, but the same thing here. GCSF is the molecule that is used in a lot of these studies to trigger the release of stem cells from the bone marrow. So we can see better, faster bone healing, better incorporation of collagen also locally in the tissue, and even at times cartilage formation. And the last one that pertains to some extent uh, to what you're doing, I go to the extreme here with spinal cord injury, but the same holds true for, uh, for um, uh, neuropathy or peripheral nerve damage. So this is a study in which uh, scientists triggered a spinal cord injury. Uh, I believe it was a compression injury, uh, and they measured the nerve conduction, the time for nerve conduction from the stimulation to go from the plantar surface of the foot to the brain. And we can see after the injury, uh, the time goes dramatically much higher. Uh, in the control group, it stays at that level for about six weeks. But if you inject compounds that trigger the release of stem cells from the bone marrow and support their proliferation in the tissue, you get about a 50% improvement. And I'll show you pic uh, videos later of the same kinds of things that we saw in humans. Uh, you can also see the, um, the atrophy of the spinal cord in the control group compared to simply GCSF or GCSF with FLT3, uh, simply putting more stem cells in circulation. Here's another study uh, which measures the BBB test, which is essentially a test of mobility. We can picture here the wheel, when we put a mouse in a wheel, the number of turns into that wheel. And after spinal cord injury, this is the slow recovery of the mice. But if you either inject GCSF, that triggers the release of the mouse own stem cells, or inject bone marrow mesenchymal stem cells into the spinal cord at the, at the, the foci of the injury, you can see that the recovery is almost the same. Just to, again, illustrate the power of simply releasing our own stem cells. Um, so in all these studies that are showed, they're using GCSF. The limitation of GCSF and the reason why you may not have heard of GCSF for that kind of application is that if we use GCSF at too high concentration or for a period that is too long, it has or can have a severe side effects uh, in humans, in mice as well, but they don't care about this in mice, which is platelet aggregation. So it would be to say to help you repair from your heart attack, you know, we'll give you a stroke. Uh, it's not something that is obviously acceptable in a clinical, cl clinical world. So what is really the contribution of a product like Stem Regen is that it's a blend of plant extract that were documented to trigger the, trigger the release of stem cells from the bone marrow, but it is much milder, but it's completely safe. So we can do this for long periods of time, and then we get the cumulative benefit of a release of stem cells from the bone marrow. So very quickly, how did I come uh, to, to discover all these things is that I started to work in 1995 with this blue-green algae uh, growing naturally in Klamath Lake. And at the time, uh, people were using it for inflammation, immune support, mental clarity, 
I was hired to document the mechanism of action. We did that very quickly. But as I'm doing this, I come across cases of people who reversed multiple sclerosis, Parkinson, emphysema, liver failure, a kidney failure, Parkinson. And we had no understanding of how this plant could bring so many benefits touching so many different aspects of human health. And at one point, I came across a scientific article. The title was Turning Blood into Brain. We are in 2001 at the time when we all know at that time with the traditional knowledge in neurology, the brain does not regenerate. Uh, and hematology, stem cells from the bone marrow are only precursors to blood cells. They don't become anything else. So a study showing a stem cell going from the bone marrow it going to the brain and becoming a brain cell was to me uh, a breakthrough was was I considered very significant so I went into the scientific literature to see what else I could find and I found another article documenting stem cells going to the liver and to the heart uh, to become liver and heart cells so I thought if stem cells can become liver heart and brain why not pancreas lung skin and the rest make no sense that they could become those three and not the rest and if they do if they can become all these cells, then it has to be the natural function of these stem cells. So we published an article in the journal Medical Hypotheses uh, suggesting that stem cells are the repair system of the body. And in the back of my mind, the thought was, what if that plant simply acts as a natural stem cell mobilizers? So we bought a, oh, these are the papers. So flow cyto the turning blood into brain, uh, same studies on the heart and on the liver. And that's the article that we published in Medical Hypotheses. And um, so we bought a flow cytometer, start to count stem cells on ourselves. Uh, and then very quickly, we discovered that that's what this plant was doing. So at the time, uh, the main comment from scientists was, well, maybe this is random. Maybe this does, does not mean anything. Uh, maybe it's not good for you. So, uh, so we had to show the reality of it. We need to have the, the, the active compound, the mechanism of action, the proof of concept that it was indeed supporting tissue repair. So we did all of this. And after doing all of this, in my mind, I thought there has to be other plants supporting stem cell release from the bone marrow. If stem cells are the repair system and we evolved in symbiosis with the environment, what would be these other plants? So we looked at other plants known historically to be associated with many benefits uh, and we studied a lot of those. So another one that is extremely interesting is seabuck thornberry from the Tibetan plateau. Uh, after about two hours after consumption, we have about a 40% increase in the number of circulating stem cells. Then we came across one specific aloe in Madagascar, aloe macroclata of 65 species of aloe in Madagascar, the only one used for a remedy called Vahona in Madagascar is aloe macroclata. And uh, so we did our own extraction for aloe macroclata. Uh, and then when we tested it, we got so far the biggest release in the number of stem cells or biggest increase in the number of circulating stem cells. So I won't go through all of them. Before we continue with this great discussion, I just want to take a quick break to acknowledge this week's sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Zuckerman Future Technologies. Their Remy laser is a class four laser for professionals. It's different from anything available on the market in that it is a lightweight four pounds and compact but powerful device. It's large touchscreen makes it easy to use and the multiple wavelengths, 650, 810 and 980 nanometers, power variables up to 30 watts and a safety rating make it optimal for many conditions, including the effective and pain-free treatment of soft tissue issues such as plantar fasciitis and Achilles tendinopathy, peripheral neuropathy, neuromas, arthritis, onychomycosis, warts, and more. It is the only laser with FDA 510K approval and insurance coverage. Zuckerman Future Technologies was built to focus on quality products and excellent customer support. When you join the Remy family, you will receive one-on-one -on -one training and ongoing support. Zuckerman Future Technologies deals with all aspects of the Remy in-house, and this keeps out the middleman, which allows them to offer this revolutionary device at a 40% reduced price compared to anything that can provide the same or similar results. In addition to this, Zuckerman Future Technologies provide a comprehensive, well-rounded marketing platform that includes customizable brochures and posters in-office educational videos for your patients, as well as web page and hard copy ad templates. There are currently over 700 Remy users in the United States and Europe, and those numbers are rising every day. 
Learn more about this fantastic product and join the growing number of professionals who are benefiting from having the Remy in their practice. I personally implemented the Remy laser into our practice about four years ago, and I cannot say enough about the utility, versatility, and efficacy that I have seen with this technology. I also can say that of all of the capital equipment that I have purchased, and trust me, it's been a lot over the last 36 years, this is one of the best expenditures I have made. Zuckerman Future Technologies off, is offering the listeners of the Pot of Inquiry a really great deal. You'll get a $1,000 cart for the Remy Laser when you use code 007. That's right, a $1,000 Remy Laser cart for just the bona fide Pot of Inquiry Spelunkers. You can go to the website, remylaser.com, and use the code 007. These are the main plants that we found in stem regen. It's essentially the blend of the top plants that I have documented over the years to, uh, to trigger the release of stem cells from the bone marrow. So relatively almost doubling the number of stem cells in circulation. So if I go through some of the case that we have with a blend of these plants, uh, either stem regen or other blends that I've worked with over the past, this is a study on congestive heart failure. So these are individuals with chronic stable congestive heart failure failure, at least two years of stable congestive heart failure. And uh, we have a group with stem regen, a group with adipose stem cell injection, and a combination of both. And this is an ongoing study. This is preliminary data. But just on stem regen, in six months, we get a 20% injection uh, increase in ejection fraction. So six months later, all the patients in the study essentially are normalized. With stem cell injection, we see the same benefits, slightly higher combination much better. So this is the same data just shown using box plot. And this is the same data. This is the increase in ejection fraction or after six months, but with other data, decrease in natriuretic, natriuretic factors and increase in the uh, score that is used with the Seattle angina questionnaire. So improvement in overall cardiovascular function. We're also doing one on Parkinson right now, but which for what concerns your profession here. Uh, so this is an example of what it does in wound healing. This is not a surgery, think surgery. This this is a, an injury with a circular saw that uh, the gentleman was trying to open the floor with a circular saw. It bounced and landed on his thigh. So it's about eight inches wide, about an inch deep. So this, I'm repeating what he told me, his doctor told him, you know this kind of injury way better than I do. But he was told that it may take about three to four, six weeks before he can fully put his weight on that leg and probably another four to six weeks because before he can move completely naturally. He took about a third of a bottle of stem regen uh, in the early days. And this is eight days uh, after the injury. And this is the scar, round saw, tearing of the skin of the muscle. This is the injury 16 days later. So remember when we talked about the study on the diabetic uh, wounds in mice, uh, when we show that with more stem cells in circulation, this is it's these stem cells that will migrate in the skin instead of the local fibroblast creating a keloid scar. This is a round saw injury and see what the scar looks like within just two weeks. Um, this is an example of what can take place in terms of repair of nervous tissue. This is a lady that was pushed out of her car about 15 years before we start to work with her. She can move her right leg some, but she has absolutely no mobility in her left leg. When he ask, we tell her, move your left leg, or can you move your left leg? And it's the, it's the right one that moves. Um, so uh, she then started to take uh, this blend that we had at the time. Uh, this is eight months later. We can see that she can now bend uh, both legs. She even has lateral movement with both legs. Um, and another two months later, we were able to film her in her bed, which is the video right after. And you will see this is someone that for the past 15 years had to ring a bell to be able to be turned in her bed because of bed sores, um, to be fed, uh, to, to be dressed, essentially anything in her life, she needed assistance. And this is 10 months later, she's now able to lift her leg. So we talk leg muscle, pelvic muscle, uh, abdominal muscle, back muscle, arm muscles, uh, and she's able to use the weight of her leg to not only turn right and left, but also use the weight of her leg to grab her leg and be able to sit up and be able to scoot back in the bed to be able to just rest and be able to eat on her own, read, read a book. Uh, so unfortunately, she did not have 
physical therapy for years. So her limbs are deformed. So she probably didn't have the option for recovery. But let's think what could happen if now we give a product like this or we use this approach with somebody who has had a fresh spinal cord injury. So we are working with a team in Spain to do this kind of work. So here's a few cases of people who have had condition that are, uh, are what you see in your life. And I'll let them express in their own words here uh, what's their experience. Can you hear okay? They may not be able to hear it. If you just want to explain the, uh, explain, um, the uh, story. They, they will be able to hear. Let me just reshare by now doing optimization of audio. And then, um, and then. It will it will show better. So tell me now. Let me know if you don't Before hear I well. I started taking stem regen. I was involved in a yep. car crash and I ripped loose my bicep and the supraspinatus, the muscle that goes across the top of the shoulder, and so those had to be reattached. So I was looking for something to use as part of my recovery. So I thought that stem regen might be able to help me because, as my chiropractor explained it to me it would encourage my natural stem cells to get throughout my bloodstream so that they could then hit the affected area and help it to heal. And boy, was he ever right. So the way that my health issues improved is that when I went Are you still there, Christian? It he looks might have like froze. he might have froze, but for the attendees, um, this was a 61 year old gentleman. I, he he had had a, cut that down, oh, and after that, I didn't have to take any. I needed to return to work quickly, and it enabled me to do that. In fact, I'm in my 60s, but my orthopedic surgeon told me he had never released anybody back to work, especially as physical a work as I do, in as short a time as what I got back to work. And I have to attribute that to this because this is the only thing that was different from all his other patients. What surprised me the most with stem regen, I expected it to help with the healing, but I didn't expect the extent of the help that it would give me. I have almost no scarring. I didn't expect that at all. Um, it was amazing the way everything just stitched back together. Uh, the, the doctor still wouldn't let me use my arm for his standard period that he has it in a sling and you're not allowed to do anything, but I could feel it and it felt like it was perfectly normal and ready to go. And he was worried that I would overdo, which I didn't, but he was worried that I would because of the fact that I told him flat out, look, my arm feels okay. It feels normal. Before <clears throat> I found stem regen, I had an ankle injury that was from a motorcycle accident when I was 20 and I have 10 screws and a metal plate and all new skin there. And so I had chronic pain uh, throughout my, most of my 20s and into my 30s. What made me think stem regen could help me was I tried basically everything else to work around my ankle. Oops, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Christian, why don't you just explain that you can just uh, uh, verbally explain <laughs> his, 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 I, I cannot tell his story like him. Okay. Okay. Um, he's a, he's in his mid forties and he, um, very active, active guy. And so he had this ankle injury from, uh, you can saw the, the, the plates and screws and ultimately he's, he, uh, he's able to do CrossFit. His inflammation went down. He actually lost weight in his mobility. He can run, he can do his golf and, uh, just everything is enhanced, even on a chronic, as you can see there, even on a chronic, uh, uh and so my body just you know, felt chronic really pain good. and inflation and from just, benefit just like is overall, I lost about five um, pounds and procedure. you know it was a great benefit and I'm not mad about it at all what I'm able to do now that I couldn't do before taking stem regen is just having more confidence to go out and play and run around and play more golf and take hikes and be with my children and my family and just know that my body's going to be able to withstand any of the demands that I ask of it So here's very quickly another case. So this is diabetic gangrene. So he was scheduled for amputation. Uh, so we provided with 
him with some products, 60 days, surgery is canceled. Uh, last one to show here is this before and after. So this is, um, I don't know, Brian, you can jump in because I think it was a consequence of some drug treatments that created an effect and she, she, she carried this for two years. Um, so it's been a six year journey. This is actually our marketing managers, consultants, mother-in-law, and it's just been a debacle for six years. The last two years, they've been trying all types of drugs, haven't really come to a conclusion. They don't actually know possibly autoimmune. And so he's like, try it, just try it. And, um, she, she didn't have energy to play with the grandkids. And after two weeks, she's like, I feel like I have a brand new foot. Sometimes we get these, we get these cases and we're like, they're just like crazy cases, but um, yeah, that's a, a significant improvement, obviously, after two weeks. So for your application, when we do clinical trials, we do like on the heart and the Parkinson, uh, we always do two capsules three times a day. Uh, but for surgery, it's a much shorter use. Have you seen in the in these testimonials? Uh, I mean, within a few weeks, you know, they have reached essentially a full recovery. So we're kind of squeezing that into just a matter of 20 days or so. So two capsules three times a day uh, for 20 days. And if anyone, if the people do physical therapy, then to couple any one of these intakes of two capsules within an hour or two of the physical therapy, simply because physical therapy will essentially trigger movement, pain, uh, activation of the area, which will make the area signal. And this is really what calls stem cells to that area. So we want to maximize the call with a higher number of stem cells in circulation. So essentially stem regen triggers a wave of stem cells in the circulation. We want to maximize that wave of stem cells going into uh, the affected area so dr, uh, dr. dr. barrett you want you want to yeah. sh share some of the some of your experience yeah so you know um we have had the luxury of seeing a handful of patients now uh, i think we started putting patients on this uh, in july and um we've had i don't know four or five patients now that had their first surgery on their you know their other side and or on the same side and then came back. Cause a lot of times we have to do serial uh, surgery because it's, just, it's too much at one time. And the first time I noticed it, the one gentleman came back and he said, you know, I healed really quickly from my first surgery, but this seems even faster. So we've kind of had a control in a few of these people where they had one experience uh, before they started taking stem regen because I'd operated on it before we really uh, got going with the product. Uh, but it's been pretty compelling. On myself, I've noticed that um, I recover very quickly. I uh, had a, a fight with the tractor on Friday afternoon and didn't even know it and uh, came back to the house. And my wife said, well, why is your arm bleeding? And I looked down and it's like, oh, I didn't even know. And it was all bruised, pretty deep cut. And, you know, three, four days later, you can hardly see the wound. I mean, it's just closed up very quickly. Uh, so I, you know, I, I think this is a a great adjuvant uh, for your patients, uh, you know, to, to optimize them from a perioperative standpoint. We haven't even touched on the fact of just these chronic cases of peripheral neuropathy, but, you know, I think there's a lot of role. Uh, there's a lot in, in both of these roles to, to look at with uh, mobilizing their own stem cells. And then we also use a lot of peptides in our practice. We've used, you know, um, different types of stem cell, uh, therapies in the past. And like you pointed out, Christian, you know, combining this with that, it's only going to enhance that. So I think there's a lot of merit to it. I think the other thing that I've been very um, impressed by is how accepting the patients are. Once you, you know, give them a couple of minutes of, of explanation of like, we're, we're not having to take cells from somebody else. We're going to take your own cells and get them so that they're not so tightly sequestered in your bone marrow and get them out to where they need to heal. And they, they're able to conceptualize that very well. And it's a pretty easy uh, um, thing to get them to buy in on that. So I think it's a you know a good thing from a practice standpoint because it's ultimately good for the patient. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you for that. Let's open up the Q and A. I'm going to allow Joel Foster. You're you're able to talk um, if you want to answer your question. I think you're on mute. And then um, for the others, you can obviously go ahead, Joel. Hey there. No, I didn't. I didn't actually have a question. So I'm. I'm. This is interesting, though, for sure. Wonderful. And if any, 
anybody else has questions, either raise your hand or you can just do it, do it in Q and a, um, Christian, if you want to uh, put that slide back up, um, yeah, that's what I'm doing. But if I put this slide, the QR code is behind the people's oh, okay. pictures. So put it this way. So if you guys, if this is something interesting to you and you want to incorporate it in your practice, stemregen.co is the website and um, you have to register online because we approve, we approve the accounts um, because you all are un under your, you know, podiatrist orthopedics. Um, it'll be uh, approved very quickly. But uh, just because you come from Dr. Barrett's network, we wanted to kind of give you a, a blessing of a 15% discount if this is something that you wanted to put in your practice. Um, it's a dietary supplement, so it may be a little bit different. I don't know if all of you are utilizing uh, supplements or um, non-prescription you know, prescription, um, pharma base. Uh, the MSRP is $189. The wholesale price to you is $113. And we do 12 bottle packs. So every 12, 12, 24, 36. Um, and, and yeah, and um, there's 60 capsules in a bottle. So if you did the two standard capsules, that's a day, that's a month supply. We suggest on those, on those trauma cases, AKA surgery and things like that, a higher dose. So two capsules, three times a day. Um, even at, even at one bottle for 10 days is very significant for, uh, an added, added benefit and recovery. Christian didn't quant, he didn't actually express the quantification, but two capsules of stem regen will trigger the release of up to 10 million of your own stem cells. And, you know, you do that every day. Um, Dr. Talan. Uh, Nora, I don't know if I pronounced that correct. She said it's, is it FDA approved? So that's what's unique about it's a dietary supplement. Um, we don't follow under that, um, under that pathway. Christian, I don't know if you want to speak more of that. Uh, um, on the dietary FDA. supplement are not, a, <clears throat> dietary supplements are not approved. Uh, it's all under the Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act, which is under the FDA, but it's regulating more the quality uh, of, of, of the products to make sure that they follow GMP. But there's not in America a process of approval with the FDA. So if you have anybody who says that their product is FDA approved, they're, they're, it's marketing. <laughs> And um, all these plants come up from around the world, but all of our manufacturing manufacturing is in Dallas, Texas. At you can explain the manufacturing facility, Christian. You've worked with them for many years. Well, they're certified pharmaceutical. They're the facility that used to do um, uh, what's that tablet? Um, Zim. Zim. Uh, I forgot the name. Um, it doesn't matter. Anyway, it's, it, it used to be a, a, a huge, huge, I think, anti-histamine, um, um, and they moved back up to their headquarters in the, ne in the Netherlands. So it's a facility that is absolutely top-notch, over-the-counter, uh, so pharmaceutical, which is higher and above what is required for dietary supplements. So it's a top-notch facility. Does anybody have any other, any other uh, questions? <clears throat> What we've seen, we didn't we didn't show enough. And and I'm Brian. I'm the VP of Sales. I, my information. Let me put it in the uh, in the chat. Um, and there's a follow. There's gonna be. This is recorded, so this is my email address um, and my phone number. There's gonna be a follow up email with that information in there. So I'm more than happy to uh, continue connecting. I actually, before I came into this, um, into STEM regen about a year and a half later, I come from the medical device world. I spent five years uh, selling Arthrex, so have worked in the orthopedic podiatry, and then I eventually went into spine, but um, yeah, spent a lot of time in other than, other than preventing age-related diseases, which is the, you know, the, essentially the, the long play of this, I looked at this and what it was doing for post-operative surgery was just absolutely nuts. Um, I had my friend, he had a, he had a high tibial osteotomy with a, with a PCL reconstruction and he just 
he was off narcotics on day two. Um, he came into his 10 day post-op and the surgeon was like almost worried because he was moving so much. We just had, um, a, a, a friend of ours. Um, he, uh, he's, he's that HRV guy on Instagram, but he had a ladder J procedure. You guys probably know it's where you transfer the glenoid because he dislocated his shoulder mode so much and he fractured the anterior portion of the glenoid. You transfer the glenoid and then you put two uh, screws into the glenoid. So it, it acts, excuse me, from your coracoid, from your uh, coracoid joint. And then you transfer that onto the glenoid. So it acts as a glenoid. He just literally saw his eight, his surgeon eight week post-op and he's now doing push-ups. Normally the full recovery is about, is about um, four months. So half the time. And we just, we just see it at hip, hip procedures. And then Dr. Barrett, you're already seeing the recovery with, with the skin and, and things like that. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. And Brian, I'd like to add that if anybody wants to reach out to me, they can contact me through, you know, go to our pod pods, uh, our podcast website, and shoot me an email and be happy to uh, have a chat with anybody. Wonderful. So. Well, if there's no other questions, Thank you all, Christian. Thank you so much, Dr. Barrett, for putting putting this together. And um, um, hope we can talk to you soon. Thanks, guys. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Several years ago, I chose Alpinion as my ultrasound brand of choice after years of experience and research into ultrasound imaging. In fact, I have two of their machines. Alpinion has incredible precision and penetration built into their technology that, in my opinion, is simply the best value in all of the ultrasound imaging space. They have several price points to meet your needs, and I can tell you definitively that you'll end up having to pay double to achieve the equivalent imaging quality from other top brands. That doesn't even account for the unlimited software updates and remote tech support included with no monthly fees. Right now, to show their appreciation for the listeners of the Pod of Inquiry, they're offering an incredible discount. Their portable i7 retails for $21,000, but you can get it discounted at most medical meetings for $19,000. But my listeners will get it discounted to $15,900. This has never been offered anywhere for the new portable system with the engine of a console system. Use code SBPOI to take advantage of this incredible offer. You won't be disappointed with Alpinion. I sure haven't been. We hope you all enjoyed today's show and got some truly empowering knowledge out of it. You can always follow up on anything we talked about in the show notes, found at our website, potofinquiry.com. If this incredible and educational conversation has tickled just a little bit of your cortex, please leave us a review and spread the message to your friends and colleagues. Let's keep spelunking. This podcast is designed for informational purposes only. It does not constitute any medical or surgical consulting advice or imply a development of any physician-patient relationship. The opinions of guests who are featured on the show are not necessarily the opinions of Dr. Barrett or the production team. This podcast is owned solely by Barrett Medical and Surgical Media, LLC. While the show is highly oriented for physicians and healthcare providers, anyone interested in the improvement of human performance and understanding will find us a welcome goblet to sip from or guzzle. However, no representation or warranties are made in any way whatsoever on this podcast for any products, techniques, or other things discussed. Invited guests are not vetted by the pod of inquiry for their qualifications and may have a direct or indirect financial interest in what they present and discuss on the show. The pod of inquiry disclaims any responsibility from anything taken from the show and used personally or professionally. It is a responsibility of the listener to perform their own due diligence prior to the implementation of any ideas, products, techniques, or anything talked about on the show.